We are looking at a portrait by Hyacinth Rigo, who was a very, very successful portrait painter in France during the reign of Louis XIV and into the reign of Louis XV. This particular portrait is called a French Master of Requests. The sitter, or the man depicted here, has been identified previously as André Pierre Hébert, who was Seigneur de Bouc et de Villiers. But this has been brought into question more recently, and so all that we can say for certain is that it is a portrait of a French Master of Requests. The Master of Requests served as a sort of judge in a Supreme Court or in a Court of Appeals. He's a learned man, and you can see that because Rigaud used particular things to convey that. He has painted Rigaud with his finger in the book as though he has just finished reading and has stopped to greet whomever is in front of him, and that would be you as the viewer. Rigaud's sitter is extending his hand in a gesture that reads as a gesture of welcome to us in the 21st century, but in the period when this was painted, was a common gesture to include in formal portraits because it came from the world of formal dance and the world of the court. So really, Rigaud is connecting the sitter to the world of the court. And his whole face is very pleasant. But at the same time, he is dressed in his full formal judicial robes. So all of these things serve to put him in a frame that emphasizes his role as a member of the nobility of the robe. And these were nobles who owed their rank to their ability to serve in the royal government, that is, the, their people who were the lawyers, who were the administrators, who were the treasurers, and they became a new type of noble that was more beholden to the king than the older nobility or the nobility of the sword. And the reason that it was so important to Louis to build this strong connection between royal power and local power was that when he was a boy, when he was growing up, there were a couple of relatively serious rebellions close to civil war, largely as a result of some nobles who were unhappy with policy coming out of the palace at the time. that marked Louis in terms of his determination that that would not happen when he was king. And so he was very conscious of creating a, an atmosphere that viewed that royal authority as ultimately a good thing. And so all of the physical trappings, all of the decoration, all of the ceremony. The way he patronized the arts was aimed at fostering that perception. And so Rigaud fit very, very well into that model. And so it's really no surprise that his portrait became one of Louis's favorites and is said to have hung in the throne room.
Rigaud was making the bulk of his money doing portraits. We know a good bit about how Rigaud worked because Rigaud's day book or account book has survived. And in it, he recorded whose portraits he painted, what year, and how much he was paid for them. He also made a note of all of the copies of any of the portraits that he made, as well as notations about whether the costume was repeated or original. Again, as Rigo became more and more fashionable, you would want people to be able to tell, oh, okay, he's had his portrait done by Rigo. That was part of the point. He uses light very well. You have the little bit of the arm of the chair that shines out here, the gilding and the carving. Uh, you have, again, his hands and that starched white cuff. And you see the much softer light on his wig. And that was a part of emphasizing dignity and wealth because it took a lot to maintain these wigs and to maintain them in good condition. You see flashes of light on the curtain that's billowing out over him. And that light emphasizes again the rich velvet of this curtain with its heavy tassel. You can see the texture of the robe that almost makes you want to reach out and touch it. It's very lush and very soft and shiny. Then you can also see a totally different handling of texture in the leather binding of the book, which of course is matte finish. It's a, not a shiny finish. Again, you feel as though you could touch that book and feel the, the softness and the suppleness of the leather under your fingers just as it's under Monsieur Hébert's fingers, or the master of requests. Rigaud's portraits were particularly notable for making their subjects look like they were the best they could. They all look very either wise or pleasant or welcoming or dignified. Even when he painted portraits of people who had terrible reputations, he manages to capture their best qualities. One of the poems, or a poem written in honor of Rigaud, ends with the line, he gives to heroes a second life and along with them enjoys immortality. <laughs>